In 2005, UK residents drank over a billion litres of wine. It may have reached their table in a bottle, but it began life in a barrel. At this traditional German barrel manufacturer, they're making one that can hold about 225 litres. The cooper who makes the barrel will need three lengths of wood. He'll split them into four pieces and use that to make the planks he needs. Now, making a barrel isn't just about sawing wood into planks and sticking them together. You'll end up with a square barrel for a start. Another problem with just sawing up your wood is the tree's pores. When the tree was growing, they would help carry nutrients to the leaves and branches. However, once it's cut down, the pores become just holes in the wood. The planks must therefore be cut with the grain of the wood to stop the barrel's contents leaking out over time. Traditionally, oak is used to make barrels because it's strong, and the chemicals it releases help it to improve the quality and flavor of the wine. To make staves from the planks, they're sanded down first. The ends are then sawn off at an angle to help shape them. If you want a proper barrel shape, the staves must be wider in the middle and narrower towards the ends. It takes a master cooper years of experience to be able to achieve this by hand. Now, although they're not all exactly the same, traditional wine barrels have a diameter of 56 centimeters. To get this right, the cooper must use between 25 and 30 staves. But as they're all slightly different, he has to keep trying until he gets the right combination, which can be a little bit hit and miss. When he's got the ones he needs, he'll attach two of them to a metal hoop. They'll form the structure to which all the others will be added. Once the last one is ready to be put in, the hoop can be tightened up. And voila, one perfectly formed wine barrel. Well, not exactly. You can see the beginnings of a barrel shape, but you couldn't really store any wine in it just yet. First, the staves need to be bent. The cooper lights a small fire in the center of the barrel and the staves are brushed with water. This combination of the heat and the humidity makes the wood flexible, so we can bend it. But it's not just a case of bending them in by hand. A large vise is attached and slowly tightened up. It's very, very slow. After about two hours of tightening, you can actually see the barrel shape, even though it doesn't have a top or bottom yet. Next, the cooper will toast the interior. What the cooper is doing here will have a really big impact on the flavor of the wine stored in this barrel. A small fire is lit to singe the wood. More singeing will mean a richer, smokier flavor for the wine. But he has to be careful not to burn the barrel too much. That would ruin the wine. Having spent ages making it watertight, the cooper now drills a hole in the side so he can get the wine out. He also needs to give it a top and bottom, so a lip is cut into the inside. The cooper then measures out the diameter using a pair of compasses. He can then transfer the size to the boards he's using to make the bottom with. It's then time to turn on his trusty saw and cut out a perfect circle for the bottom of the barrel. To fit it, the hoops that have been holding it together have had to be removed. He inserts the disc and then replaces the hoops and tightens it all up again. Then, just to be sure it really will be waterproof, he sticks straw into the gaps between each stave. Now he's got the barrel into shape, but it still looks a little bit shabby round the edges, so the cooper can now give it a bit of a makeover. 
Sanding down the exterior used to be done by hand, but it was long, slow and very hard work. The modern Cooper is far smarter. He gets his assistant to do the work, using a machine to spin the barrel for him. First he planes down the wood, watching out for enormous splinters as he goes. And the barrel is then given the once over with some fine sandpaper to finish it. All that remains is for the barrel to be fitted with some fresh steel hoops. The Cooper marks up the steel and cuts it on his custom guillotine. He then splays the steel so that it's tight against the barrel and gets the best grip possible. It's then all riveted together for strength. The hoops are now fitted to the barrel and hammered firmly into place. And the final addition is the Cooper's seal. Well, okay, his stamp. So the next time you taste oak in your glass of Chardonnay, check that there aren't any splinters still floating around.